Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be looking at the question beautiful arrangement. Suppose you are having n integers from 1 to n. We define a beautiful arrangement as an array that is constructed by n numbers successfully if one of the following is true for ith position in the array. So, if the numbers at ith position is divisible by i or if i is divisible by number at the ith position. One more thing is that we are considering that the index starts from 1. So, so if we see the example 2, n is given as 2 and so the arrangement we can do is 1, 2 and 2, 1. From this, both of them satisfy the condition as in this particular arrangement, 1 is divisible by its index 1 and also 2 is divisible by index 2 or the position 2. So, the answer here comes out to be two beautiful arrangements can be made. Constraints given in this problem are that n can range from 1 to 15. Now, let's see how we can solve this question. So, let's take the example of n as 3. So, here I have taken an array of size 3. The way we will be solving this is by fixing the position of one of the number and then trying to fill the rest of the number. If the numbers cannot be filled, we backtrack to a previous position from where we have options to fill other numbers. So let's see it visually how it happens. So initially the array is blank or it has a default values of 0 you can consider. Now so initially we fix the position of 1 at first position. Now we need to fill 2 and 3. So we go ahead and we fill 2 at the second position as 2 mod 2 is 0. Now we go ahead and fill 3. So this is one of the ways we can fill the array. So once we have reached this, we have filled all this, we need to increment the count and then we will start backtracking so that we can get another permutation of this particular number. So now let's take this off and add 1. So now we will start backtracking from this particular array. So we'll first start removing 3 that we already added and now is there any way we can fill this array that has not been filled earlier? No. So we backtrack again and now can we fill 3 over here and 2 over here? No because 3 mod 2 is not 0. So we again backtrack one more step. Now we filled 1 at first position. The second time we'll fill 1 at second position and try to fill remaining numbers in these two positions that are left with us. So we can fill 2 in the starting position and then we can fill 3 in the last position. Again we have got this complete array so we increment our count. Now again we need to backtrack. So we delete 3 and then 2 and then is there any position left wherein we can fill 2? Can we fill 2 here and 3 here? No because 3 mod 2 or 2 mod 3 does not give us 0. So we again backtrack. Now last thing we have left is filling 1 in the third place. If we fill 2 over here, can we fill 3 in the second place? No because 3 mod 2 or 2 mod 3 is not 0. So we will have to backtrack. So we tried filling 2 in the first place which did not work out well for us. So now next thing we can do is try filling 2 in the second place. So we fill 2 in the second place and then we try to fill 3 which satisfies our condition and thus we can increase our count. If you see there are no more places, no more permutations or combinations left for us to try out. So we just return the result which is 3. That's the approach of backtracking while we are going and filling out the array each time we are moving ahead or going back, we delete the element from the array. One of the other ways we can do this is by getting a pre-filled array and instead of trying to fill, we just swap the values. So that would save a little bit of time for us. Now that we know both the approaches, one is by filling the array while going ahead and one is by swapping the values, let's go ahead and code both these approaches. Okay, so let's try out the first approach. So here we'll take a result variable and now we'll take an array which would be of length n plus 1 so that we can check the indexes starting from 1. Then we call a function dfs on this nums starting with 1 and ending to n and at the end we'll return the result. 
in this DFS function, we first check if this value has gone beyond our length. If so, we increment the count and then return so that we can backtrack. Otherwise, we take a for loop. And here we need to check a condition that if our number is 0, that is it is not yet filled and if value mod i is 0 or i mod value is 0. So in this we can set our nums of i equal to val and call our dfs on nums val plus 1 till n. After the dfs is called we need to backtrack and so we again make this 0. After everything is completed we will get our result in this result variable. Let's try to run this code and it gives a perfect result. Let's try to submit this and it got submitted. The time complexity over here would be O of k where k is the number of permutations that we are getting that is 3. The space complexity would be O of n that is given to us for saving this nums array. Okay, so let's try the another method that would be by using the swap function instead of filling this array every time. Okay, so we'll need a result variable and the nums and we need this pre-filled. So we write a for loop and fill this array. So now we need this DFS function or the helper function which would help us in checking the condition and backtracking. I'll write this DFS function. I'll just need a starting point for this and I'll not take a ending point. In this DFS function, we still have the exit condition but since we are starting from n, this would go to 0 and not n and that's done. The for loop will also start from val which is n. So let's just delete this for loop and write it again int i equal to val i is greater than 0 and i minus minus we do swap nums i and val and then after backtracking we again would do this same step and between this we'll be checking our condition so if nums of val mod val is equal to 0 or val mod nums of val is 0 we need to call dfs on nums and value minus 1 because we are moving backwards that's the only change in this function and now we need to write a swap function so it would take an integer nums array and the two indexes and in this we take a temp variable and store nums of i in it and then we replace nums of i with nums of j and then nums of j with temp so that's it let's try to run this code okay, so i missed this i over here and it gives us a perfect result let's try to submit this code and it got submitted so the time complexity of this one is also o of k and the space complexity is o of n thanks for watching the video see you in the next one